Hey guys, in this video I will do a breakdown on how I created this material, uh, my approach of creating it and how I rendered it inside Unreal Engine 5. And uh, here is a quick uh, example of how it actually looks like in Unreal. Uh, so the texture itself looks like this inside of Substance Designer. And let me actually disable all of the masks. So I'm using a tail generator with a 7x7 grid. And uh, everything else is by default. Uh, I haven't changed anything uh, in, the, in those settings. Uh, and then I'm using a bevel node uh, to bevel out uh, uh, this edge because without it, it will look it will look uh, something like this yeah so it just bevels uh, corners a little bit uh, and then i'm doing a, uh, like this outer edge deforming deformation which is a sl very slight one and those uh, and this is a mask that, dri uh, that, that drives the def deformation and uh, the mask itself uh, looks like this. Let me make it bigger. So uh, it's uh, I'm I'm using a combination of two plasma uh, noises. Like this one with a scale of fifteen on the top one and uh, this disorder, and the bottom one is uh, with a scale of thirteen. And then I'm using a directional warp on both of them, just to add some randomization. Uh, and then I'm using a, this intensity. And this uh, white values will basically uh, will be subtracting or deleting uh, geometry. Uh, and then basically I'm doing a simple blend with the blending mode is set to add, just to add both, both of these uh, noises together. And then I'm using a histogram scan and just uh, to remove uh, to remove uh, mid gray uh, color color and just to have uh, almost black and white mask. And after that, I have created a flat fill node. Uh, this uh, I have used this flat fill node to create a random grayscale values. It's a full fill to grayscale and you have you know, and you just have to play around with the slider to get the value you want uh, so here i have this uh, histogram grayscale from 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 the flat field and this is the value i used and after that i have also used a histogram select this is basically to add the uh, contrast to the mask uh, to, uh, to the to the gradient that flat fill returns uh, so if i don't have this mask it will be like so and i want something like this and the, and and why i have used it is because i want uh, to apply damage uh, on onto the specific bricks not just all of them but the specific ones uh, and after that i'm using this mask uh, in, in inside of this blend node, uh, which uh, which applies damage from these two noises, and uh, the directional warp is to add additional variation from the uh, single mask I have used uh, in in four different places, and this is just to use uh, single like noise and then randomize it after that uh, a little bit. So uh, I have I, I have done a simple randomization by applying an, an, another directional warp with this intensity and also I have done a histogram scan and uh, the blend mode is set to subtract which is why it's subtracting uh, height information by default it was like this so it's basically removing all of the parts uh, which uh, is highlighted in, in which is black and you can also do a net or multiply sorry operation it will look like so, and sub, it will look like so. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, then I'm doing another 
damage effect, which is uh, with another blend node, uh, which is also set to subtract. And by the way, uh, the first uh, blend no node uh, is uh, with opacities. Uh, I haven't touched uh, an opacity slider, but on the second one, I have uh, changed it to 0 0.4. By default, it was too much for me. And uh, the idea is pretty similar. Uh, I'm also using directional warp to randomize uh, rotation. But it's, as you can see, it's very similar. I can, I have any. Uh, it will be different, like so. It seems to be like something like this, maybe like this. And as you can see, it's giving this type of effect. And in this case, uh, I'm applying, I'm applying uh, all of the damage to the all of the bricks, not just uh, specific ones. And this is too much for me, I guess. And after that, I'm doing another directional warp. I'm also blending it with uh, clouds noise. And then I'm do doing another directional warp. And then I'm doing a threshold, edge detect, blur, uh, HQ grayscale, and histogram scan. And this is uh, all to add another uh, edge damage to the bricks. And here I had chosen a different bricks based on their position. So as you can see, I can change bricks and here, is a, here they will be updated automatically. You can also increase the range. Uh, it will, the higher the, num the, high the value, the more bricks will be selected to the, into the mask. Uh, so yeah. And then I'm doing another patch damage, as you can see here. Like uh, This is more like uh, scratches or some something similar. And here I have also used another histogram select node uh, to select uh, certain uh, bricks uh, to apply damage onto. And uh, here I have uh, a different uh, variation from the same uh, noise after a histogram scan. So what I have done is basically I have rotated it uh, 90 degrees as far as I remember. Yeah. And then I have done a blend. Uh, apply rotated a noise pattern and then I have done another directional warp just to add a randomization like a scratches some sort of it and uh, all of the uh, all of the blend nodes is using a sub, uh, subtract uh, blending mode and uh, and I have just played around with the opacity to uh, with the values that was suitable to me and uh, as you can see on the scratches uh, path I have a very low Capacity set like 0, 0, 008 or 0, 0, 005, and here as well. And after that, uh, I'm doing another pass of uh, like edge damage or scratches. It's a very minor detail, I'm not really sure if it's needed, but it's there. Yeah, and the blending mode is set at to sub because subtract was giving me something different as far as I remember. So I have used a uh, add sub in blending mode. And again, it's just pure experimentation. So you have to play around with uh, certain blending modes until you get something uh, suitable for yourself. And yeah. And uh, the way I have, it's very uh, minor effect, but uh, I wanted to have some sort of like this streak lines and the way I have done it is I uh, combined crystals one and crystals two noises. And here we have this variation. And then I've done a directional warp, which could be also like this. And here it just adds uh, another small scratches, which could be could be there or not really necessary, but I have added them in any case. Uh, and then I'm doing another blend with the plasma. It's everything by default, I guess, as far as I remember. And I'm doing another blend with a subtract uh, blending mode and uh, this opacity value. And uh, this basically deforms bricks a little bit, a very minor, minor deformation. It just adds you know, uh, like, like a little bit of deformation to every brick, basically. Uh, the whole wall 
uh, could be like deformed a little bit. So yeah, uh, this is why I have done it. And this pretty much it uh, for the uh, height, uh, texture, and deforming and creating actual height information uh, for the texture. And let me show you how I have created the color texture. I'm using a normal uh, Sobel option uh, with the intensity set to 2. And then I'm doing a curvature smooth. And uh, for the base color, I have used this gradient, which I uh, picked from the image of the stones uh, found in the internet. And then I'm doing a color variation with the float field to color. And gradient map is going to the color input. And the uh, field, flat field is this uh, initial flat field node I have created. And this gives us uh, an uh, option to randomize colors uh, by these sliders. So I'm, I can change the luminance of uh, each color. I can change saturation, random saturation, random hue. And this is how it simple it gets. It's real, very basic. And uh, for the dark area, uh, I have also used uh, an output from the uh, color curvature smooth. I have uh, used a threshold. And uh, basically, the, this whole node uh, is to separate uh, top parts of the brick from the, like these middle sections, cross sections, or whatever they call between the bricks. And so I have the opportunity to like, color uh, those areas uh, instead, of the, instead of actual bricks. And uh, the way I have done it is I have used a threshold node uh, just to... Like, and the mode is set to lower, by default it's greater. So, so I'm doing the levels. It's actually... I can actually delete it because it doesn't do anything. And then I'm inverting everything. And then I'm doing a blur grayscale and using a gradient map. And uh, blending it with the base color, which is this color. And uh, using the half of the opacity and the blending mode is set to multiply. And then I'm also, and, and then I'm again blending color and luminous variations from the flat field to color. And this is basically to combine like uh, these cross section areas, which is dark one, dark ones, uh, it, to combine them with the uh, actual brick variation. And this is why uh, the setups have been used to separate uh, like cross section uh, sections between the bricks. And uh, what about this blend node? Is uh, I have uh, I have used this blend node to multiply, and uh, I just wanted to add randomization color variation to this uh, darker color because without it, it will look like almost identical. But I, I want to break it up a little bit. It's not really... I can barely see it, but it's there. Just, but, it, it, but it's present. So here's how, how you can do it. And uh, after that, uh, I have created a brick uh, highlights mask. Just to add uh, highlights. So without highlights mask, it, it looks like this. Not really interesting in my opinion. But with it... It looks something like this. And the mask itself is uh, like basic for threshold. So everything that is white uh, will be like uh, colored, will be affected, and everything is black won't be affected. And uh, that's it for the brick mask. Uh, and uh, here I have created an initial uh, noises uh, for the noise pattern, which will be applied to the uh, edge uh, highlight mask, uh, which is this one. And uh, here I have used clouds and gradient map, and then blending it with the uniform color, which I have created here. And then I'm blending this plasma a noise with the uh, with the clouds noise based on this mask as you can see here uh, and then I'm blending this no noise with the uh, actual color and using this mask to apply 
this uh, noise to the specific area because by default it will affect everything by this uh, by this noise and uh, that's pretty much it for the color itself and for the roughness i have also used a threshold and the histogram range uh, to balance everything uh, so i can so with this position slider i, I can uh, make uh, it rougher as you can see here and i can also change the range and play around with it And for ambient occlusion, I have, I have used uh, uh, this node with uh, quality set to 16 samples and this high depth value. And uh, that's pretty much it uh, for the texture itself. Uh, let me actually show you how it looks like in Unreal Engine once again and how I set up everything. And uh, inside Unreal, I have used a sequencer. Uh, I have imported all of the textures. I have created a separate level, uh, which I have uh, called turntable. And uh, I have created a render folder with a sequencer. And uh, I have also created a material. And uh, it's a basic one. Uh, so uh, here's the imported textures. I have converted every texture to parameter. Like so. I convert to parameter. And uh, for the roughness, I have multiplied roughness by whatever value I, have, I will pass here to control the look. And by default, it doesn't have any roughness. And uh, for the texture tiling, uh, I have used the texture coordinates. And uh, I'm multiplying uh, x and y tailing values uh, by appending them together and then multiplying. And I have plugged uh, all of these values to all of the texture, all of the textures. So, so if I tile, as you can see, it's tiling here. And uh, that's pretty much it. And then I have created uh, a lot of instances, material instances, and that's pretty much it. Uh, for the lighting, I won't be going deep on why I have used this lighting slide stuff and how I did it. This, but basically, uh, let me show you in the cube. So I have uh, lights separated for the, every object. So I have cube, cube, and sphere objects, and uh, all of them has separate lights. Uh, for example, let me actually disable all of them in the spotlight. So I have a backdrop color. Let me actually show you from the camera itself. So I have a drop uh, backdrop color. Then I'm using a rim light. Two two rim lights. Let me actually. So backdrop, oops, sorry, rim light, rim light, and then a side light or whatever it's called, another side light, another one, and then a field light or whatever it's called, I'm not really, I'm not remember. And that's it. It's very basic, just to look good. And the same uh, goes for the sphere, but I have uh, changed the color temperature of the light uh, on the sphere. And uh, the same goes for the tube. It has only three lights. Oh, I'm sorry, four, uh, including backdrop. So backdrop, rim one, rim two, and the fill light. As far as I remember, it's how it's called. And uh, the same goes uh, for the sphere light, as I said. And here's the animation itself. 
in the sign, inside of the sequencer. So it basically changes. Uh, so it basically changes uh, cameras as well as uh, objects. And the way I have changed the camera and objects is uh, like it's and it's very like manual way of doing it, but uh, it works for me and in, the, in this case. Uh, so for example, cameras, uh, I have uh, add an option to enable visibility or disable visibility. Same for the objects. And uh, the way I have done it is uh, you, can, you can add a track and rendering uh, actor hidden in game. And when you add this option, you will, you will see this visibility parameter and you can keyframe it. So when, whenever you, you, you do, you, so whenever you don't want to see a certain mesh, you just, you can just disable it and it will automatically the keyframe. So like, for example, here we have, I have a cube and then it disappears. And the uh, same goes, and I have keyframed for every object, like three objects in this case. And the same goes uh, for the lights. I have added this visibility option to every single light. You can uh, hi uh, you can uh, select all of them, and then you can add uh, this parameter, and it, and it will be added to all of them. And the same goes for the cameras. And uh, for the objects, uh, rotation objects. And under transform rotation, I have uh, changed this value, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I keyframed uh, so I, I keyframed it from zero to three sixty, and that's pretty much how I done it. It's pretty simple. Uh, there is just a lot of setup going on. And uh, what about it in the night displacement uh, to, onto the geometry? Is uh, you need to go to the static mesh and. In this case, it's a box, and you you have to double click on it, and then you you need to enable the night, the night support checkbox. Uh, click on it, and uh, you need to change these values as well as displacement maps. You need to click on this plus icon, and then you need to specify your height map, and the magnitude is will be and the magnitude is how much your geometry will be displaced. In this case, I have used a magnitude of three, and uh, so as you can see, it will be. A, the geometry triangle count will be different based on how long, how far the object is from the camera. And uh, uh, I will link a video in the description explaining better how this works. This option here is determines how many triangles will be added onto displaced geometry. Uh, so the lower the value, the more triangles will be added, and uh, keep it. And uh, if you will add lower values than uh, 0 0.1, it will just uh, calculate much longer. And also based on how large the geometry is. Uh, so yeah, and, and this is how you can use the night displacement uh, with uh, created height map from Sunstice. On the substance designer. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you found it useful. Hope it wasn't too confusing. And if it was confusing, please let me know in the comments and I will answer your question. Uh, have a great day. Take care. Uh, see you in the next video.